Oh, yeah. You guys thought I forgot about fresh off the boat. Gotcha. I did not. I will never forget about fresh off the boat. <laughs> um, no, I like to give... There were... I usually... The time I went to make the video, there were only a handful of comments on there, so I like to give you guys more. Um, input. So, I waited it out. Um, and uh, let's get let's get to it. Fresh off the boat. I have. This is the first time I've done this with uh, with the, my TV class, and you know, I've been teaching it for fifth, sixteen years or something now, but. Um, extending race week for like basically almost two weeks right we did boondocks all in the family master of none fresh off the boat brooklyn 99 and with brooklyn 99 sort of being a transitional show it's a it's about intersectionality basically and i'll talk about that in that video but um Master of this is the first time I've used Master of None this way and fresh off the boat and added those commentaries to this larger discussion of race. I think it's been I think it's been healthy and um a good a productive endeavor, right, to show, you know, Middle Eastern, Asian black, white, like to, to at least uh, spread the discussion beyond black and white. I talked about that in class all last week. And Fresh Off the Boat is perfect. Hopefully there's more, there's more Asian representation coming. Um, I, you've seen it, like, depending on how you, you feel about it, right? Crazy Rich Asians, the movie, um, and like fresh off the boat and parasite winning all those Oscars and just things like that. I think and it's it, you know these movements are never quick, they're never fast or particularly efficient, right? Which is I think Melissa Melissa brought that up in one of her, her comments. Like I love for that fresh off the boat exists, but right, it could have. She wished it had done more or could have done more. Um, it's hard to hold a, a show accountable that way. Um, but I totally understand. So the, a little background. I mentioned this in, in class on Wednesday, but there was an Asian American sitcom in 1994 um margaret Cho. if you don't if you don't know her she's a she's a prominent uh, korean stand-up com comedian who ended up getting a sitcom deal in 1994 it's called all american girl and it's supposed to be it was on abc abc as well and it just did not go well um, just, yeah, it, for instance, they, the show thought it necessary to hire an Asian consultant because the Asian that Margaret Cho was, wasn't stereotypical enough, right? And the network really manipulated all of that to make it, you know, pretty hokey kind of. Uh, racist basically <laughs> show and it didn't do well it lasted a season and then they canceled it but margaret cho jokes about in her stand-up she's like it took 20 years for for people to forget about that it's that and for fresh off the boat to you know to be 
viable. Like how, that's sad. Um, but here it is. So there is there is some history of um, this kind of representation. I guess it's a it's a testament to how kind of shitty it was that we weren't ready for this you know, for Asian representation in 1994. Um, so I I keep saying this, and I I, I, don't, I feel like I should apologize because I keep saying it, but. This show is another show that deals greatly with the how much of myself do I have to give up to survive, right? Not just to be or just to be happy, but to survive. And that's been a theme with all of these shows about marginalized groups and minorities or people of color is how much of myself do I have? I can't, I never feel like I can truly be myself. And how that, how that can really wear on you mentally, emotionally, and oftentimes physically. How, it, how that sort of life can be so limiting and frustrating and debilitating in many ways. And you see it here with with all the with pretty much all the characters they're all in various stages of giving up themselves right eddie eddie seems like he is refuses to do it you know jessica's kind of like trying to fit in and um what's his name randall parks the dad he seems like to have given it all of himself up Right, hiring the white host and just like whatever it takes to get this restaurant off the ground, and just varying degrees of it. Um, but it's a shitty question to have to ask. It's a shitty reality that we live in, that people even have to negotiate this dilemma of: All right, can I be myself today? Can I be black today? Can I be Asian today? Or not, do I have to compromise that, my identity, for the sake of just, again, like survival? Like, not just to, like, fit in or be happy or whatever. Survival. To, like, exist, almost. Um, assimilation. I'm just going through my notes. Assimilation versus selling out. Like that's an, that wrap that into how much of myself do I have to give up, right? Like, because then your community's like, oh, you're not you're not Asian enough. That's what happened to, um, that's what happened to Margaret Cho when she was sort of presented to the public on this through this forum of television. Everyone said you're doing it wrong, right? And you're doing it wrong. You're being Asian wrong. Like, and that's all based on, you know, stereotypes that we've accepted. Um, but how much, like, of course people want to fit in. It's, I think it's human nature to want to find a group and, and get along with other groups and fit in with the culture as a whole. But, at what point are you sacrificing or compromising your own traditions and values and things like that, right? Generally, white America doesn't have to, doesn't have to sort of grapple with that because we are the, we are the dominant culture that is people are aspiring to for some reason um, and selling out, right? We talked about this with Cosby, most specific, the Cosby show most specifically, like making this black family white and that was a sellout and he's selling out his community and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like, can't I just try to fucking do something here? Um, but it kind of ties into their comment on it is Eddie's stance of like, 
I'm fitting in to get a seat at the table to change the game, right? And we talked about this in class, like, why are you assimilating? Why are you, why do you want to fit in? Like those, you know, that has a lot of bearing on kind of whether or not you're compromising yourself, uh, if that makes any sense. Eddie's whole speech about, you know, and I, sp I think he speaks for the community, right? He's a mouthpiece for the Asian community in some ways, in this case, where he's like, I'm just trying to get a seat at the table, right? Then I can, then I can change whatever that takes. Then I can change things for the better and make people see me in a different light and educate them, I guess. And Jack, Jack's comment ties into that. I'll get to that um, in a minute. Um, it has this, right? It has this, uh, I, this one of my favorite threads that goes through the series of whiteness is overwhelming for, for like a, a minority or for a person of color. Right, this the scene where the rollerblading um, women come up, and Jessica's like, it's just, it, too much whiteness, right? Whiteness and white culture can be overwhelming and stifling and judgmental, right? That a bunch of you mentioned in your comments, like just that that sort of flippant racism of. Oh, you speak great English. Oh, I thought your name would be more exotic. Like really condescending, kind of keep you in your place kind of stuff that often gets just, you know, ignored. But that that feeling that white whiteness is overwhelming, right, for people of color. Um overwhelming and homogenous, right? All the women look the same, talk the same. Like, why, why would you want to be the same? You know, like that, that is a fitting in. It's, it's a, it's a conundrum, I guess. Um, but Jessica asked Eddie, why would, why do you want the same thing as everybody else? Like, that's a great question to ask a lot of, to ask anybody. Basically, it's like, why do you want to fit in? And Eddie's see at the table thing is I think a good um, a good use or implementation of it, but other reasons aren't so hot. Um, I made the connection to the boondocks. If you remember the boondocks, one of the opening scenes is like Riley and Huey sitting on the roof with the BB gun. You know, like why did Grandpa move us here? There's a lot of white people. This is how white people act. Like the car, once there's coming, you know, that scene. Very similar here. Right? Eddie's sitting with Emery, maybe. And they're moving in. They're just sitting on boxes. And they're like, man, there's a lot of white people here. Why did they move us to this one? Same. It's a very similar scene. Uh, it's just, I guess who cares? But I noticed it. Um, There's, you know, there's the culture clash of, or the, even a generational thing where, you know, the Jessica, the mother is like, just don't wait, make waves. Stay out of people's way. Mind your own business. Don't make waves, right? And Eddie's all about making waves, right? Again, like, it, it's, it's this balancing act. It's of being a minority is a balancing act that I think I'm, I'm, I'm mildly obsessed with it because it's, I feel like we don't talk about it in the broad sense. Like we talk about it probably too much, but I feel like it's not acknowledged culturally. Um, enough. Um, 
there's the whole Emery thing. We talked about this. Like, Emery gets off the bus the first day, and he's like, he's got a girlfriend and all this stuff. And it ties into a bunch of things, right? And the line he says is like, you're trying for You want it too bad, right? You're trying to fit in. That's what he says to Eddie. Like, you want it too much, right? It's like, you need to just back up, back off, be yourself, and let sort of the world case the world come to you but that's not good enough for eddie he has different designs it's also a middle school thing like eddie's in middle school and middle you know middle school kids are fuckers um and this division stuff and and um ignorance and hatred really start seems to start to take root in middle school and judgmental and stereotypes and separating and um there's that element to it as well um and there's i think there's a couple comments about it that i'll get to in a minute um but that resonated with me too he's like you want it too bad you want it too much like just let it let it come to you um kind of idea and the Lunchables metaphor is just too perfect to use, to not use, I guess. Um, and, you know, Lunchables are this metaphor for, for America, basically, or white America, I guess, right? Everything fits into a little box, its own little compartment, never spilling over into the other. And baloney, right? <laughs> There's baloney in it. Um, but this always make, brings me to this question. Like, why would why would you want, why would anybody want to eat Lunchables? It, there's legitimately no good reason to want to eat Lunchables. Right? Why would anyone eat Lunchables? The taste? Come on. <laughs> the taste? Diarrhea? To fit in? To be ironic, I guess, there's no good reason to want to eat Lunchables. But the one that people, the reason people buy them, at least in this scenario, 1995 or whatever, when this is set, it's the only reason is to fit in. If you're, if you're doing anything just to fit in, that's, a, you're compromising yourself like too much um so it's like why are you getting the lunchables that would be my question to eddie why do you want these he's ba i think he says to fit in i'd be like then no that's not a that's not a good enough reason now i have the luxury of saying that because i'm a white guy but that's lunchables is the um, it's the perfect metaphor for this, for this show, for this, uh, for this series. Um, they talk a little bit about the racial hierarchy, and it was brought up in Master of None too, like just how the black kid is higher up. It thinks he's higher up if there is this racial hierarchy of sort of this pecking order. I guess, right? He's like, no, now I just moved up a level because there's an Asian kid here. Um, talking about that and how ridiculous, how ridiculous that is. And the use of the word chink and sort of drawing attention to how hurtful that word is, right? Yet, they said it in the episode, so it's not. It's not compared to the, I mean, it's the N-word, basically, but we'll say that one, you know, we won't say that one, but we will say this, like, what, where is, where do we draw the line, and why is that the case, and a bunch of you got into it with your comments, that idea, just like, you know, there's a lot more accepted racism 
against Asian Americans and Asians. Um, that we just, you know, we turn, we look the other way, or we don't notice it, or we assume it's okay, right? Because they're cool with it, or whatever. Um, there's an old Sarah Silverman bit about that, where she was going on a TV show and she had a joke with um, the N word in it and with the word chink in it, which I will find for the rest of this video called the ch word because the you know the c word um because i shouldn't i don't want to perpetuate the theonomism and the network censor said oh you can't say the n-word you have to say something else or say you have to say something else and she's like oh okay um but what about the ch word and the network guy was like oh yeah you can say that don't worry it's fine <laughs> like just that interaction is very indicative of how you know how little stock we put into asian racial issues and the you know the persecution and and um discrimination that they face day to day and it's becoming more prominent or obvious or talked about now in light of these recent spike the recent spike in attacks and and complaints about Asian American discrimination and violence against so I mean uh, I think fresh off the boat was a good start so hopefully we can start to see that proliferate more and more in the culture um so to your comments uh summer someone brought up um the person who made the comment about establishing stereotypes in order to break them down we have to do that i i made that comment summer that was me <laughs> i want i want my credit no um it's a hundred percent like that's what comedy does better than anything it builds up you you can't have a stereotype free environment and expect to deal with stereotypes if that makes sense so you have to construct, you have to build up the stereotypes to break them down. You have to show, here's the thing you know, right? Here's the thing you think you know, I guess. And now we're going to dismantle it in, in front of you. And you're going to see it differently, hopefully. And Jessica's a great example of that in the pilot episode, right? The whole tiger mom thing, and she cuts against it when she defends Eddie and doesn't just say, Oh, he did something wrong, then he should be punished, right? Regardless of anything else. Um, so yeah, it was that was a that was a big part of our discussion. Um, Peter and Jack kind of tied this together, this idea of I guess the accepted racism of against Asians that exists, and I just talked about it, you know, or just a minute ago. The Sarah Silverman thing and just the racial hierarchy and all those kinds of things. Um, but I'll go back to Master of None when Deb's talking about, you know, people don't get riled up about racism against, you know, uh, other less prominent <laughs> uh marginalized communities right that's basically what he's saying like they don't care about indians being discriminated against or asians um and that's kind of um that's kind of what peter and jack were were pointing to and this show kind of shows that right this the subtle racism or the or the accepted racism that that exists toward this specific group more than than others 
Um, what do you mean it isn't? Oh, I think this the show does deal with that across its the whole series. This idea of fitting in isn't all it's cracked up to be, right? You think you want to fit in, but you, a lot of times when you get there, you're like, oh, this is, I mean, that's like a trope in a lot of entertainment media. This, is, this sucks. Like, why did I want this? You know? Um, um, Melissa, I mentioned your comment about, like, this is a good start. It's a good, it's a good start. Or restart, if you count All American Girl in 1994 as the start. It's a good restart, but the series itself obviously had limitations. Lizzie brought up some of those limitations in her comment about it being on a big four network, uh, held to a different standard than the rest of cable and pay TV and things like that. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute, but it's a good start. And I think it's a like we've, I've said before, like being critical of the things you love, like if Melissa was on the nose when she said, like, I wish it had done more, right? I love, I like the show, but here's what it could do better. Um, Jack mentioned the whole thing about not, it's okay, like this, 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 sentiment that it's okay to be racist or Asians because they won't do anything about it or they won't complain about it or they're cool with it or whatever um, that I was talking about before but like my favorite thing that Jack brought up was this idea of who really needs to change right I mean shouldn't we be trying to change the, the culture that discriminates against difference and otherness isn't that what we should be trying to change not we shouldn't be we shouldn't want to change ourselves to be more like that and to fit into that um and he the, the quote from jack's comment was it's easier to change yourself than educate everyone else but are we looking for the easy way out right i think that's that's a that was a great point and I think Emery kind of makes that point in his little thing where he says, you want it too bad. Don't change yourself. Let be yourself and let people come to you. Let the world come to you and adapt to you rather than you adapting to this world that isn't really worth adapting into and is going to shit on you. Right? So... I thought that was a really good question. Like, who needs to change in this, in this uh, relationship, right? The people who want to discriminate against anyone different, or the the person who is different, and infinitely more interesting. Like, Eddie should be trying to, you know, educate these shitty white kids or other kids about himself and who he is and his traditions and his family and all that kind of stuff instead of shedding all that or pushing that to the sides to be you know to fit in with their idea of what it means to be Asian or whatever um Vicky brought up a good point about like she's children are a product of their parents like you, you don't you, basically hatred and ignorance is learned and that's part of the emory uh emory eddie thing like emory doesn't experience the same kind of shit that eddie does probably because the kids haven't really learned it right um and emory kind of shows like that kids are generally accepting uh, but at some point along the way, they get these negative ideas from a, either TV or movies or their parents or their friends or like wherever it's coming from. It's generally not innate, I don't think. Um, so I like that Vicky made that made that distinction. Um, and 
this I just thought of reading Nikki's comment. The the show itself is giving Asians a seat at the table, right? The show itself being on ABC, putting Asians into the general discourse and dealing with this stuff on a regular basis is sort of actually giving the community a seat at the table. So, there. Uh, Sade talked about, again, I kind of distill your comments down to these little phrases, the weight of being a minority. I don't know what that means, but um, Sade's comment sort of brought that, right, overwhelming white, how overwhelmingly white, what overwhelming whiteness can be, right, white America can be. Um, but all the weight, right? Um, how when you're a minority, a lot of times, if you're in the public eye, you start to think, I am the spokesperson for every Asian person in the world, or every black person in the world, or every gay person in the world, or whatever it is. And that, how much of a weight that is, I feel like I can't be myself because I have to, I'm speaking for all these people. Like, that's a weight that nobody needs to carry. They feel that way. That was a Margaret Cho thing. Um, when she first did her show, she she got a letter. She would get tons of letters. A letter from a little Korean girl who's like nine years old or something. She This is Margaret Cho telling the story. She's like, when I see Margaret Cho on TV, I feel ashamed. Like, for I'm ashamed to be Korean and that she is our spokesperson, like, that shit is fucking heavy, dude. So, like, the weight of being a minority is a lot. <laughs> um, Amanda sort of tied in with Vicky's about hatred being learned. Hatred is learned. Ignorance is learned for the most part. Um, and then Lizzie sort of brought it, took a step back, a different angle, talking about how, you know, what we're getting is filtered by the network, right? A big network is trying to get as many viewers as possible. So it doesn't want to offend, and I guess Eddie, Eddie Huang, Huang, um, yeah, I'm terrible, Huang, Huang, who this the show is based on his memoir um and he yeah eddie is eddie right he he was pissed over the course of the series at the stuff that the abc refused to put in the show there's a lot of stuff about domestic violence and abuse and things like that that they were like no like this is abc you know friday nights or whatever it is so um, the network has, you know, sort of limits what the show can do. Um, and it's, you know, that's, that's unfortunate. But yeah, it's another obstacle that shows like this are up against. Um, so, I hope you guys liked it. Like, fresh off the boat. And like the discussion and the video. And like everything. Yay.